Well, the thing of, about coming here to the TIS was really to show what we can do to help SMEs in the tourism sector to uh, improve their services, optimize their resources, embrace digitalization. And that's what basically it's our core business. So we came especially for two purposes. The first one is to talk about artificial intelligence, um, to talk about what are the good and not so good side of intelligence, artificial intelligence for that matter. Um, there are many things that you know, we can still do to improve the experience of the customers, to improve also the knowledge of the decision makers when it comes to their companies and how they manage tourism flows. So, for example, we came to present what we've done in the field of personalization of the trip, uh, how to help uh, customers to really have a much more tailor-made experience based on their preferences, priorities, on their taste, on their disposable income, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We also um, presented a number of uh, solutions in regards to virtual assistants and chatbots, uh, whereby they could also have support in real time uh, with accurate information. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, frequent asked questions. And then also um, another thing that we also came and, 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 and exposed and explained during our chats was also about um, how to help uh, smart destinations in, their, um, in the way they manage tourism, especially tourism flows. And we presented a number of studies where we have shown special destinations with a lot of uh, congestion or over tourism problems um, how to monitor, track, or understand where the tourist flows go, um, how we maybe can do things to reduce the burdens and to improve the experience of the tourists. I would say the challenges um, and the opportunities are, are, are great at the moment, um, especially after coming from the pandemic. Um, there's, especially in, in certain countries, there's more and more uh, reservations towards tourism development because it's been like, uh, it, we also came to the conclusion that um, the way the tourism was uh, basically developing uh, until the pandemic was probably pretty unsustainable. Whereas now we have to look into other ways of really reaching in a very hyper, uh, personalized way uh, to customers that are very much more demanding than before, very knowledgeable, very de um, also, um, uh, they, they might be changing their mind because of the, the actual offer that they're out there. So we um, basically think that the opportunities for the tourism sector, in, if it's developed in a proper way, if it's in tune with uh, all the sustainable practices and principles, it can really be something that um, adds more weight to the economy. Um, however, we are also cognizant of the negative impacts of the tourism industry if it's not properly managed. And therefore, uh, we are also very mindful and we also uh, try to give advice to companies and, and public administrations when it comes to the to the negative side of, of the technology or the embracing technology in a in a too broad way, and for that matter, for example, I mean that um, the despersonalization of experience by applying too much technology it's a risk that we should mitigate and we should be very mindful. Um, the opportunities, uh, I think, that they are in a country where we basically um, our main source of income is is the tourism industry, um, I think we we are doing things very well. Uh, I have to say, but always there's room for manoeuvre uh, and this is something that it's, it's quite widespread. Um, and therefore, I think that it's always a matter of collaborating together with, uh, and it's something like it's a cliche, the public-private partnerships. But I think it's, it's only the only way forward is to really work together to create synergies, to be very, very uh, down to earth when it comes to uh, um, solutions that we create for the tourism sector and also bearing in mind the, uh, the context in which we, we are living, a context with uh, a lot of conflict uh, in a global emergency when it comes to climate change. And this is something that we have to try to make as possible responsible tourism practices much more widespread so that people really understand that they can contribute positively in, in, in a way of doing some regenerative tourism uh, impacting not only on the environment, but also in societies. Gatherings like this, which in my opinion are not like too broad, not too big, uh, give you the opportunity to mingle around with experts, with uh, persons uh, with a lot of expertise in the field, uh, coming from different backgrounds. In this particular case, Pearl is very much technology-based or technology-oriented, which is, is, is an essential part because we know how much uh, we rely on technology nowadays 
but I thought also I think it's good to have into, into places like this, into the TIS, for example, organizations that really care for the well-being of the, of the people. Um, in this particular occasion, also at Eureka, we've been talking about uh, digital humanism, which is a key concept that I think they have to go hand in hand with the technology development. So it's, it's a place where we expose ideas, where we try always to make things for, for, for good and for better and also thinking always having in mind the impact that this has on society. It doesn't make sense whatever we do if we don't really think about doing a contribution towards a positive impact into society.